Hi friends, my name is Borrodante. Let's test Krita. Wow, what is happening here? <laughs> okay, so Krita is a free open source piece of software for artists specifically, contrary to Photoshop, who is initially just a software for photo makers, photographers. So let's give this a try and see what kind of benefits we might find since this is specifically for artists. This is gonna be literally the first look. I never even opened it before. So don't expect a super clear critics about this because I don't know, I'll just uh, take a look and I'll tell you what I think the first time I see this. And I think we might make another video later after I take a better look at everything. So I'll make a better review. But right now let's just think of this test as what would artists think about this program when he first launches it. Something like that. So let's start. Okay, let's create a new document. Uh-huh. Holy shit, you can paint in 32 bits. I like that. I mean, I used to paint like that, but I do not recommend. Let's go in my favorite resolutions. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm okay with everything. Let's create. Uh-huh. All right. Touch. Working good. Can I rotate canvas? I can't rotate canvas with my fingers. White people problems. Wow, I can't paint with my fingers, though. There you go. <laughs> Double tap doesn't put it back in the center. That's annoying. <laughs> this is gonna be rough. Maybe double click on the grabby handy tool, but where is it? Hmm. Okay, so we can shift space to rotate. Escape doesn't put to the zero degree rotation. That's annoying, because how would I else do that? Anyway, let's go through some brushes. Which brush looks like it's okay to work with? What is happening? My pen right now is at the very top of the screen, yet I'm painting at the bottom. I mean, okay, I never saw this before, so now it's frozen. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> Something's uh, happening with the whole tablet support. Maybe it's in the settings? Tablet settings. Right, this is the curve of the pressure. Okay, I didn't find anything, so... Wow, it's making one stroke and then it's frozen. What's up with that? Finger works. Holy crap, it has some sort of a three-dimensional ruler for perspective. I'm not sure if we're able to actually stick to it with our lines, or is it just a visual aid? I'm actually painting with my finger right now. The pan, it doesn't work. Let's maybe restart. Okay, it kind of works for now. But again, it doesn't support the pressure at all. And it's frozen again. Yeah, something's not okay. Maybe it's the problem is with the full screen mode. I turned it on right away. Wow, this is really not working out. I'm painting at the bottom of the screen again. But now I have the pressure sensitivity going on. Hmm, unusual interface. I never had to deal with this one. But I gotta say, the brush stroke looks really good. <laughs> It's actually smudging as well, or whatever you call it, smudge, blur, finger tool. I'm not sure if it's very useful, like when you're actually painting stuff, but that's a nice feature to have. I want to take a look at the brush engine. That's one of the most important things for me. Oh, it has smoothing built in as well, and freezing brush as well. <laughs> I mean, like... It's smoothing strokes, and also we have some sort of perspective guidelines, so it's basically including features of Lazy Nizumi, kind of. But seriously, working with Pan, that would be a good addition to the software, I think. Yeah, weird. Maybe I should restart, like, reboot. It didn't ask me to do that. Oh, hello. Who are you? Right-click panel some sort. Okay, we have two main colors. Eraser, another eraser, third eraser. I guess we can put our own favorite brushes into it. Oh, we have different collections here. Okay, I guess I'm gonna try to reboot because this is very weird. 
Okay, so I tried rebooting, I tried changing the resolution of the screen to 1080p, because my screen is Ultra HD, I thought maybe it's too big of a resolution for it, but nothing really helps, I'm still painting a thousand pixels away from my pen. <laughs> but hey, I found the brush engine! Here it is! So we have a whole bunch of things to set up, which is cool! I think I'm gonna switch to my mouse, since we can't work with the pen right now. Let's give it a try. I just wanna find out what this thing can do before finishing this awesome review. <laughs> what I already found in hotkeys and I really like is that shift click is for changing the size of the brush. Like shift, click and drag. It's really comfy, I like it. Most brushes have this uh, smudge effect applied to them. That's a really cool thing, and it's really shitty in Photoshop, because they only have this effect of smearing like as a finger, like directional smearing, but that's not a thing artists need. So let's see. It's a shame I can't really work with uh, settings of pressure sensitivity and tilting, but at least we know that it supports it. Tilting and pressure sensitivity worked. It was just not where I was holding my pen. Can I have this window somewhere constantly, not just as a pop-up. That's a bit annoying. I guess it's even better to work with a finger. Super realistic bristol brush? I mean, can I apply like textures of my own? Alphas for textures and such. Wow, these brushes are actually trying to work with every single bristle like this. Pixel wide. Why? This doesn't even look right. <laughs> Who would need this? That's weird. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just, I can't find it in my head to figure out where to use this kind of brushes. So I'm trying to find, like, there's a huge list of brushes. I'm trying to find the ones that are actually for work. This seems nice. Let's see if we can change the texture of it and where that's happening. Okay, we can make default round shape and square shape. That's kind of cool. Ooh, even smooth square. I love smooth squares. And, uh, I mean, it's good that it's a default, because default brushes, they are vector brushes. They're super optimized. I hope so. It's supposed to be like this, at least. And here are just different photographic alphas, which is also cool. But this is for the brush pattern. I wanna see where are the actual textures going on. Wow, this is weird. There's totally a texture applied, like the texture of the canvas. Maybe it's actually in the canvas settings. They do that sometimes in, uh, like in Painter, for instance, in Corel Painter. Oh, there it is, like at the bottom, the whole section named texture. <laughs> okay, so pattern. Pattern is the thing we need. What's the strength? Okay, we're uh, changing the strength of this texture, how it actually affects the stroke, I guess. Well, this is cool. Is it easy to import your own? New tag, no, that's not it. What's this? Uh-huh, yeah, and we can import any kind of images for textures. This is cool, this is, this is working. I mean, don't forget, this is free. And it's basically doing everything Photoshop does, and in some cases even more, so it's kind of cool. I mean, certain incompatibilities take place, but I mean, 2.9. Well, Photoshop has like... What? 20? I don't know. They stopped counting years ago. The same moment they stopped actually developing the program. So yeah, I'm actually really happy about this whole window, it's really making me happy. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to discover here, like a whole bunch of settings. That's really cool. I hope I'll find out how to fix the pen problem. We have symmetry in here, like at all time, how cool is that? I mean, I'm never gonna use it, but... <laughs> Where would you need a perfect symmetry? I don't... I don't know. But still, it's cool for concept art, for instance. When you're developing a character, it's really cool to start when it's just standing perfectly straight, like, symmetrically. So it's cool to work that way. I wanna find out what this thing does. We can kind of, like, create four points and then actually create a plane as a guideline. 
And there's a vanishing point right there at the bottom, the cross. This is cool. I wonder how far this goes. Can we actually make it actually working as a ruler, allowing to make perfect lines? But no such luck, only with my own hand. I'm actually nailing this. Look at these straight lines. Hmm, painting with finger is kind of cool. You actually can't do that in Photoshop, you can't paint with finger. <laughs> okay, so I kind of like it. It's really raw at certain areas, but a lot of things I think I just don't know. That's why it feels like this. And again, the main benefit of all this is a completely free piece of software without ads. So it's kind of awesome. We might even like paint in it from time to time, it's really great. The design is nice as well, it's dark. So yeah, this was um, an introduction to Krita, not a very successful one, but still, you know, it happens. But yeah, I feel really good about this program. I'm really excited to figure out how to fix everything and to actually make it work. So yeah, I guess till the next time, I'm pretty sure there will be a, the second episode. So yeah, this is it. For now, I thank you for watching. If you did, I guess you did if you're here. It's really weird to do this when I don't have a pen in my hand. But... Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend. Use your finger. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! They should make the pressure support for finger. They actually have it on mobile devices. It's not hard to do, it's just analyze the surface of the pressure. It would be really cool to actually paint with a finger.